Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and it is now Inktober month or has been for a little while so today we're doing a kind of Inktober special and I know not everyone uses like bottled ink for Inktober it's kind of just art in general but I'm going to be showing you today some really fun exercises that you can do with bottled ink different ways you can use it and you things you might be able to like incorporate into your Inktober challenge whichever way you do it and these can be used with other mediums as well so to start with, this is a really fun kind of abstract experimental one. As you can see, I have laid out some toilet roll on a protected surface. I've covered it soaked with water and now I am using some inks to create a nice sort of splattered effect. And that one there looks a little bit like blood, but it's not. I promise it's ink. And you want to make sure that your toilet paper is nice and wet when you do this, because otherwise it won't spread out nicely and it will literally just look like you've flicked stuff on it. And this can be used once it's dry in all kinds of different ways to make all kinds of different abstract pieces of art. And I'm going to show you what I do in a moment. But this one is just super fun and easy and a good way to get you started. So here is a nice close up of all of the lovely bleedy juice. Make sure both your clothes and the stuff around you like your table are all protected when you do this one because it's a very messy one. So as you can see, I tore it all up into nice neat squares and I'm sticking it down into my sketchbook and you can do this however you like. You don't have to tear them up. You can do literally whatever you want with these. You could make a 3D sculpture with them if you want to. Um, but I am just sticking them all down with some Mod Podge and you can do it neatly. You can do it scruffily. You can do it however. You can tear them up, whatever. And then you've, once it's dried, you could use it as like a tie dye effect background and you could draw something or paint something on top of it. I didn't do that, I created little 3D balls to stick down and this can give you a nice thickness to your sketchbook. I know people sometimes like a bit of thickness. And this is what it looked like in the end. It was very easy and it looks kind of okay. It was an experiment. <laughs> so our next one is also quite fun, easy and experimental. I think this was a trend a few months ago called like reverse colouring or something, but you want to make like your own kind of reverse colouring. And this was mine, it's very faint as you can see, but you just want to get some inks and do some random shapes and that's your background. Then what you want to do, you don't have to sketch it, you can go straight in with ink or pen or whatever, is you want to draw over it the sort of shapes that you can see. And you can either kind of tailor your original fady shapes that you make for what you imagine you'll make in the end, or you can leave it as a surprise and make it a kind of a challenge for yourself. And maybe you can make some really interesting, difficult shapes. I didn't. I just used circles because I felt like being boring today. And I just drew some faces and they look really wonky partly because the camera is always tilted slightly so the foreheads always look kind of bigger. Um, and also partly just because they are wonky, the eyes are kind of too big and I could say that it was a stylistic choice but it was kind of an accident. Um, but I had the kind of circly things turned into flowers and that was interesting I guess. Here is what the finished one looked like. I was kind of pleased with it. I think it would have looked better if I'd got the faces more in proportion, but like the idea was nice and the end result was okay. And now the next one we're gonna do is gonna be to kind of make you use a new medium that you maybe not used before, or maybe you have, and this is just boring, but um, you could use a dip pen or a quill. I've got this big fancy quill that I like using quite a lot. And you just draw with it. You can draw whatever you want. I drew some characters. I had one on a page already and I wanted to finish the page. So I drew a couple more. But um, I'd suggest like, yeah, this is a really good exercise if you are someone who likes drawing with biros or colored pencils because it's the same kind of action. Although if you've not used it before, it is quite a different amount of pressure you have to apply. If you push too hard, then like more ink comes out, I'm pretty sure, or it's just scratchy or like whatever. You just, you don't need to press as hard is what I'm trying to say. I just used mine to do the line art today, but you can use it to experiment with different types of shading and expand your kind of skills. And I also did a nice kind of blue background wash and you don't have to do this bit, but it's it looks nicer if, if there's something in the background, I guess. And the blue kind of tied in with the random page next to it, which is kind of bad. <laughs> and this is my final thing. I'm pretty happy with it. I messed their names up. Those aren't their actual names. I just kind of guessed without looking it up properly, but whatever. Um, I was pretty happy with these character designs and it was quite fun using the quill, even if it was a little bit more challenging than I normally have it. And then this next one, okay, so some colours and brands of ink can like bleed through the paper and if you're using your sketchbook then that's not very helpful if you've got stuff on the other side. So this idea to combat that is to use post-it notes or I guess you could use different other things but post-it notes are good because you get like multicoloured blocks and you have a bit more control over what colours you have rather than like just using trash or whatever and you just draw over it or paint over it or you know use the ink however you want 
and I use my purple ink specifically because I know that that's the color that bleeds through so if you have the Winsor & Newton ink set then just be mindful of that and maybe yeah only use that one if you don't mind ruining the other page or if you're doing it like this. So as you can see I'm doing a dragon and I was trying to experiment with like a different style of drawing. I used more kind of scratchy marks and different kind of ranges of mark making and stuff and it kind of worked I think um, and it was it was an experience and I'm pretty happy with it to be honest. I gave it this wash as well and I think the wash really made it a lot better because it kind of bled some of the darker shading out a little bit and it kind of just made it a little bit more wholesome in the sense that it looked more cohesive. So yeah, I was quite happy with this one. So the next idea is based on the fact that sometimes you don't always have like a reference that you want to use, you can't think of one, you can't find one or whatever. This is to just find something on your camera roll, just pick something that looks kind of artistic and then use that. Um, and the context behind this that I'm drawing here, I went to a Bambi Thug concert in Brighton in August and it was very fun and it was good. And there were these two dancers who were topless and had these like tight black masks on. And they were doing all this crazy dancing and stuff. And I have a couple photos of that and I thought that would be good to try and like practice my like anatomy and different action poses and stuff because normally I just draw people kind of in a really stiff kind of standing up straight kind of position because they were dancing. It's kind of more energetic. And so that was pretty helpful for me. And I'd recommend maybe you could do something like that as well. Because if it's in your camera roll, maybe it's more likely to be of times when people were doing stuff. You can do it as like a compilation like this, or you can try and like exactly copy what's in the photograph, like within the frame. And this is the final one for this. I was really happy with this. This was probably my favorite one from today. And this is also the end of the video. I hope you found it useful. I hope it wasn't too quick. And if you've got any more questions, let me know in the comments. And I hope to see you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.